the, to work on the balance, we need to allow the movement and then make it internal. Mm -hmm. Because this, the rider who kind of sits still, he has posture, but the movement is inside. Mm -hmm. And that's actually core stability. Mm -hmm. And that's this funny thing what I said about this germ word I teach everyone, Wirbelsäule. Yeah. 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 The germ word for the spinal column is uh, Wirbelsäule. Wirbel is like a, a hurricane. Mm -hmm. It's spinning or around, tornado, tornado, tornado or whatever. Yeah. It's spinning around in full speed uncontrolled. Do you love dressage? Are you looking to inspire your ride? Do you long to learn the secrets of truly great riders? Yes? Then you're in the right place. Join classically trained, internationally competitive dressage rider JJ Tate as she brings inspired conversations, in-depth discussions, and a healthy dose of humor to the world of dressage. Join JJ and her new generation of classical riders in this adventure called Dressage Life. In this episode, JJ sits down with equestrian rider biomechanics expert Susanna von Dietz to discuss the rider's process. The horse world has a laser focus on how to improve the horse and what they must do, but not enough has been taught about the rider's role. At the start of her career, Susanna von Dietz observed a missing link in equestrian sport and was able to channel her background in physical therapy to fill this obvious gap. In this interview, she sits down with JJ to discuss the importance of the rider's process and role in the dynamic partnership between horse and rider. Hear from Susanna about how people learn the skills of body mastery and what that actually means. And now, here's JJ. <laughs> All right, welcome you guys. Today I have Susanna Van Beats with me. So thank you so much for coming. I know it's like one of your first big trips since COVID. <laughs> And I just, it's been an amazing, like truly transformable week. And I mean, she's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. And I mean, I've, had, I've been locked up for two years and I've been doing my uh, online classes and uh, developing these ideas a bit more, but I had so many new ideas that I had not really been able to test on yeah. you yet. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, so like a racehorse in the start and, you know, <laughs> wanting to fly again. And every time I wanted something came, but now finally, I couldn't believe it till the day before. I guess kind of, yeah, exactly. I was really hesitating. Does it really, will it really happen? And, yeah. and it did happen and it's, it's really great. <laughs> and all the horses are so thankful because it's just been truly, like I said, like a totally transformative week. And I remember the first time I sort of like met Susanna, but like not totally. Um, you were teaching a clinic at the Hasslers in Chesapeake mm -hmm. City. And I, I think I was teaching a clinic, so I didn't get to go, but I saw my riders like on Monday after they had ridden with you over the weekend. And I was like, who is this? Who is this girl who's doing this? Right. I mean, like, and then they came and they're like, she had me juggling and I had to ride without my stirrups. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Sounds a little weird, but okay. And they, they looked like totally different riders and it was like, totally different in like two lessons. So I would love to have you talk a little bit about like the writer's process of how we learn and what you do, which is very, very different from kind of anyone else. Well, I mean, I, I have the luck that I grew up with horses and in the classical system, but on the other hand, had the physiotherapy and the knowledge of the human body with it. And when I was in Bandorf doing my trainer, I learned all about how it had to be. And I got a high mark for finding all the mistakes, but not how to solve them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we would learn about the horses, how, the, if, how the, they are muscled up, how the horse's hip joint is and how that functions, why they can stand sleeping and, you know, mm -hmm. all these connections there, all kinds of things. And in detail, how to train them and how to retrain them or whatever, mm -hmm. but about the rider, just how he had to be. Mm -hmm. And... That's when I decided I have to write the, the book because mm -hmm. there was no knowledge about it. By now, of course, it's modern. There are lots of people who talk about uh, equine pilates and equine this and uh, do all kinds of things besides, and there's more awareness about it. But I still think that I have a little bit of a different input into it mm -hmm. why, because 
I'm much deeper connected into the writing side. Mm -hmm. And what I combine is really um, the knowledge of how learning movement, how the development of movement is, and mm -hmm. connecting that into the classical writing mm -hmm. skills. Yeah? And um, if I learn a new movement, there are certain steps that you say how, how you learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at first, it's the movement itself, mm -hmm. that this is how you hold the rein, yeah? yeah, and you really get showed it, and um, that you need to learn, and it takes time. I mean, if you have a beginner who for the first time has yeah. to wrap his fingers from down, from up, from here, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's complicated until you have the fingers and the hands, and it's a bit tight, mm -hmm. yeah? And, but if you don't learn it from the beginning correctly, it's very hard mm -hmm. to then learn it correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then riding because of shortcuts and not time and this and that. It's one of the few sports where we we to get taught patterns that are completely wrong later, mm -hmm. and we have to unlearn them. Yeah, we get taught to pull, we get taught to pull on the inside rein, we get taught pull to kick with the legs, yeah. and all these patterns. We have to get rid of later. That's hard. <laughs> I didn't and, think of that. That's really interesting. I mean, in tennis, I learn a forehand and a backhand from the, and beginning. From the beginning, and it's the same thing. It's not changing. Yeah. I add a spin or a whatever to it, yeah, but yeah. but the basics stays exactly the same. Yeah, yeah But in riding, you could do it, but there are too many shortcuts mm -hmm. yeah and where people kick it with the leg or whatever right. you know and you get into patterns mm -hmm. that you later have to get rid of again yeah so that's why in writing we constantly actually have to go back to our basics mm -hmm. and go back to which is the pattern underneath mm -hmm. yeah and one of the specialties i think in all my funny exercises that i'm doing is that i can clearly connect every exercise to mellow it down to where this is needed in writing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The rhythm and the juggling or, mm -hmm. yeah. Or when we do the half ball that comes to outside rain and yeah. uh, lots of things that connect rightly. And it's the bigger pattern of what later in your body happens in mm -hmm. the writing. Yeah. Cause what I find really, really fascinating is how you bring the textbook to life. Like we all hear about how to sit right or uh, aid in rhythm, but like you bring that to complete life and make it make sense in the rider's body without just saying, oh, sit up straight or inside hind leg, inside. Like you, there's yeah. a way deeper depth yeah. of then like why it then becomes it can well, become like intrinsic then in our body instead of like something we're doing, mm -hmm. you create it into like becoming that yes. way. Yeah. And I mean, in, in movement learning, it's really like you learn the movement, like I said, holding the rein. Yeah. After you learn it, then you have to practice it. Mm -hmm. You have to do it again and again and again. And practicing in the movement learning theory is something you have to do slowly. Mm -hmm. You can't speed it up. Mm -hmm. You have to practice this, uh, which finger here, there, and you have to do it slowly a lot of times until you you can learn this. Mm -hmm. yeah? And in practicing, the rule is do it slowly. And until you can say you have, you, you, you can do that movement, it takes an average 50 to 60 slow repetitions. Mm. And in, in writing, it means even if I have a problem in canter, whatever, I may have to practice something and walk. Mm -hmm. And I have to give it time. Mm -hmm. If I want to feel something in my seat, trot and canter, the impulsion, the power of it, takes my feeling away. Mm -hmm. I can't tell the horse go slow motion, I'll have a four-beat canter and a dragging right. hind leg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I can go on a chair or horse for certain things, yeah. but then I have no movement underneath. But I can a lot of things do in walk. Mm -hmm. And that's why very often I have these exercises in walk mm -hmm. where you feel things and then all of a sudden we take the same idea and move it on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So practicing 50 to 60 slow repetitions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How to pick up the rain. Right. Yeah. Wrap your fingers right. around it. Yeah. yeah. 
after practicing comes a phase of training. Mm -hmm. And in training, you, you start speeding it up. Mm -hmm. It gets more. But in training, it's important that you have a trainer. That the moment you do the slightest mistake, you get puff. <laughs> so that no wrong pattern comes in. Yeah. So that you really train this pattern so that that be can become your, this is how it is. Yeah. And you get certain difficulties, but you train the pattern. It reminds me so much of a gymnast or a ballerina where the teacher has like a stick and it's like, <laughs> no, 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 like point your toe. Yeah. Like you must have, you know, and like, they're like really difficult teachers because they are so sharp about, yeah. no, 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 no. That's the wrong form. You yeah. must do it and learn it yeah. ingrained always the right yes. way, you know? Yeah, so, so in learning, this is the, the training phase. Mm -hmm. And so we have learning it, practicing it, training it. Yeah. And then comes the, the phase of understanding it. Mm -hmm. And this, when you understand how to take the reins, mm -hmm. then you can make variations to it. You will start playing around. If I have one rein shorter than the other, what does it do? Mm -hmm. Or when I, yeah, right. you, you make variations to it. Mm -hmm. And you realize you sometimes make the, deliberately a little mistake to then change it again. Mm -hmm. yeah? If you come with an example of dancers and ballet dancers, mm -hmm. if they can do the perfect period, they will not train the perfect period then anymore when they understood it. Mm -hmm. In understanding, they make a default. They turn the head. They mm -hmm. lift an arm in it so that they actually upset the balance mm -hmm. so that they have to recreate it again. Mm -hmm. If they would only train the perfect period without the variation, mm -hmm. it would it's mellow still. down. Yeah. yeah. And that's in writing. If we do the half pass 50 times, it will not get better. We have to make a little variations in out, change it, go forward. Yeah. yeah. We have to put the variations and that's the understanding time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where we kind of get creative. Right. And what I think is really important for writers to understand too, that is this understanding comes after training. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of writers who have never trained and think they understand and have to talk about it. <sighs> And they are a little bit harder to deal with. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. it's really, uh, mm. it's to really understand that you have to train it. And the next phase, after you have these variations, understanding it, then comes that you master the movement. Mm -hmm. And when you master it, it's in your subconscious. Mm -hmm. And when then comes a problem, a variation, your subconscious corrects it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In the understanding, it's conscious. You make a mistake deliberately to right. fix it and to find out and to learn about it. Yeah. But when you master it, you do it without even understanding what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And true masters in writing, yeah, they fix the problem before it happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a little bit the explanation to yeah. it. But sometimes they cannot explain mm -hmm. what they're doing mm -hmm. because it's unconscious. It's, right. yeah. And that's why sometimes masters are not the best trainers. Right. Yeah. But in learning, it's really this phase of these steps. Well, and it's interesting too, how we always talk about like good riders react and great riders prevent. Mm -hmm. It's that same, like stepping to the next perfect place of balance and meeting the horse there instead of like, oop, you know, something happened. I have to you know, right, right the wrong, you know, yeah. uh, that's really, I love how you describe that. What do you think are like some of the biggest misunderstandings in riding today? It's an old thing that we still think to static. Mm -hmm. We all know that riding the rider has to move with the horse and we talk about it. But when I come for clinics, people keep asking me, can you fix my seat? <laughs> Can you fix my hands? Can you fix my leg? They want to be fixed. Yeah, they want to keep their hands still. Yeah. Yeah. That's really funny. Yeah. And understanding that to get something quiet, to find the mm -hmm. center, I need to be able to move around it. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. balance 
And I always said that in the other day, balance is something alive. Yeah. So it will always change from one step that I make when I'm walking to the next step. It's a complete new balance. Mm -hmm. And for the horse, it's no different. So why should it be the same? Why should the rider stay in the old balance? Right. Yeah. We have to refresh it. We have to lose it and get it. Mm -hmm. And so if I learn to balance, I have to learn how far I can move from side to side. Mm -hmm. And actually, when I am in balance, I'm very fragile, but I have everything open. Mm -hmm. now, if I'm in perfect balance, I can go forward, backward, right, left, wherever. Right. You know, everything's possible. Mm -hmm. And if I sit on the horse and I feel I could flex right or left or stretch or bring it more collected, I could go forward or I could stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If everything that is possible mm -hmm. then i know my horse is in balance with me. well and that's like so related to the feeling of like on the aids you know that we always mm -hmm. talk about like there's that moment where it's that sweet spot yeah where it's like i could do anything yeah. at this moment and that's like we uh, you know a lot of times like oh he's really on the aids but he's actually in perfect balance yeah which is that moment where he could go to a half pass, to a canter, to a halt rein back, to a canter. Like it's just like mm -hmm. right there kind of in that self carriage and in that moment of infinity yeah. that like anything is, yeah. is possible. Yeah. Would you like to learn to communicate in a way that your horse can better understand? Check out Team Tate Academy, JJ's online classical dressage academy. As a member, you'll gain clarity through the USDF accredited lesson library, monthly Zoom meetings, and twice monthly live study groups called the Tack Room Chats. Join the community and benefit from connecting with a fun, passionate, and like minded group of dressage lovers just like you. Be supported and empowered to make the progress you and your horse deserve, regardless of age, level, or background. Be inspired. JJ's commitment to your success shines through in every lesson and lecture. Let JJ's belief in you and your horse transfer over to every one of your rides. Visit teamtateacademy.com slash podcast today to find links to join our monthly Zoom meetings, purchase mini courses and live stream replays, and of course, join the wait list for the next open enrollment. But when you try to keep that moment, preserve it, you then everything it. crashes. Yeah. Yeah, then you lose it. So and I, it's really letting it come to you and always work for the next of those right. moments. And great riders, they lose these perfect moments too. They yeah. just get very quick to the next one. Right. And just like <laughs> regroup quicker. Yeah. yeah. And it is, um, we talked about in our meditation we did the other morning about um exhaling the old and inhaling the new and you talked about mm -hmm. that in your zoom lecture today too where it's like there is this static thing of like we watch somebody who's really great look like they're not moving and so we want to like uh, I gotta sit like yeah. this you know and then I I just love that you've like liberated us into that just let it be and let it go and find the regrouping of the balance and the, the being able to find that center kind of over and over and yeah. over and over again. And that's just like, that's what keeps repeating yeah. itself. And, and, I mean, in order to develop this posture, I always work from my, my three, my three infinity things mm -hmm. that I use rhythmic movement mm -hmm. because through the rhythm, it I can find the middle. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. rhythm enhances the balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it allows me to let go. Yeah, yeah. The juggling, the moving, right. and we have to get part of the horse's rhythm. Mm -hmm. So rhythm is a great tool to to find balance mm -hmm. yeah, and and not and allowing to look for the next stride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, counting, breathing, all things that are in rhythm. Mm -hmm. the, to work on the balance, we need to allow the movement and then make it internal mm -hmm. because this the rider who kind of sits still he has posture but the movement is inside mm -hmm. and that's actually core stability mm -hmm. and that's this funny thing when i said about this germ word i teach everyone wirbelsäule yeah yeah, yeah. That the germ word for the spinal column is uh wirbelsäule wirbel is like a hurricane mm -hmm. it's spinning or around tornado, tornado, or tornado or whatever yeah. it's spinning around in full speed, uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. 
And Zoile is a column that's the most steady, not to be broken, you know, carrying all the weight, yeah. everything's uh, stability. Yeah. yeah. So in one word, we have the chaos and the, st and the, and the static. Yeah. And the other image that I sometimes say about posture is if you build a skyscraper, especially in Japan, when I go there, mm -hmm. that's an earthquake country. Yeah. If the structure is rigid, yeah. the earthquake would topple it. Topple it. Mm -hmm. Now, if you sit on a horse that's moving, your, your skyscraper upper body yeah. is on an earthquake. Yeah. And if you don't, ha don't have that elasticity inside, yeah. it'll crumple. Yeah. yeah. So you really have to have this static that allows movement. Yeah. yeah. To survive your earthquakes. Yeah. Yeah. Without damage to your back or to your Neck head. Or, or, yeah. yeah. I thought it was also really profound this week to talk about using the outside muscles versus like the internal spiral and like smaller. Mm -hmm. Like, is it what you call? Is that fascia? Like, what is that? When it's like, everyone's like, I want to go like work out and get stronger. And then she's like, mm -hmm. I mean, it's good to be an athlete and be fit, right? But yeah, fitness helps. There's this sense of that posture versus balance and how it's all from the inside versus like outside like muscles. Yeah. I mean, the, in the inside, of course, we have muscles going around the spine. We have a lot of fascia. I always just call it the elastic structures mm -hmm. yeah? yeah that we need this elasticity mm -hmm. inside and then we find the softness mm -hmm. because anyway can't feel which muscle right. goes around my right. seven uh seventh vertebra in the chest <laughs> yeah. yeah i can't feel it okay. yeah so uh but picturing elasticity and this inside that mm -hmm. that made the movement a lot better yeah so mm -hmm. and working on elasticity that's actually the third one. If we have rhythm and balance, mm -hmm. we need tonus, mm -hmm. which is suppleness. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to find the balance of, like I always sometimes say, a volume control to our uh, tension. Mm -hmm. yeah? we, I can sit with more tension or with less tension or with more or with less. Mm -hmm. yeah? And finding, yeah, I had one rider uh, sitting like from one taller to eight yeah. you know, and going back and going through the whole how, where can you be and find where's your comfort zone? And it will be different for trot than it's for walk. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. you have to be able to find there this balancing of lowering and, and hiring mm -hmm. and the, your, your tone. And then you find a different elasticity. Mm -hmm. So when I want to improve a rider, mm -hmm. I really look at is he in balance concerning rhythm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, or and, and this is rhythm connected to the horse's movement. Mm -hmm. Some riders move in a different rhythm than the horse. <laughs> yeah. They're not synchron. They're very, very fascinating how that yeah. yeah. And is the balance there? Yeah. And the balance I have to sometimes check because somebody who sits straight mm -hmm. but internally is not balanced, he holds himself straight. Right. And then he gets rigid. And that's worse as if he would be a little bit swaying around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. from one side to the other, that doesn't disturb the horses. All these exercises that I do where I move side to side, the horses are not disturbed. Mm -hmm. But a rider who tries to stay in the middle, yeah, yeah, and that, that's much more disturbing because it's rigid. Yeah. So to improve the balance, I sometimes have to move more than less. Yeah. And with the tone, I have to see always how much do I need and can I release it again? Mm -hmm. Because in all the aids and the half walls, we say it's the release that mm -hmm. gives the power. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if I build up tension, I need to be able to release and not to give up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's an elastic gummy that I, that I pull and I let it slowly go, but it's not slack. Well, and like everyone always talks about how, you know, Charles de Comfy, uh, my mentor uh, and classical master, I, I hear all of his words, how he says it in everything that you're saying. And he always talks about how suppleness, you know, like strength and skill build a horse up to the Grand Prix. Mm -hmm. And like, what is strength? And he's always like suppleness, that ability to be like exactly how mm -hmm. you are teaching us to be as like the leader of the dance, you know, mm -hmm. between our us and our horses. It's like, it's so important for us to have the same 
high standard inside ourselves that we're looking to give to the horse too. Or, you know, I'll say, uh, are you sitting in your own self sitting? Mm -hmm. You know, are you in your own self carriage? You know, and how can you like kick the horse if you have like from down, you yeah. know, and, and I love that, that you just, you show us how to do it in ourselves. And then that ends up bringing out a whole nother piece of the horse that, yeah. you know, it's just amazing how it's related, like sternums or stiff backs or holding too tight or stiff wrists or yeah. hard eyeballs or you know, yeah. it's just like, like it just but, goes but right like, into the horse. Exactly like you say, I mean, I'm not, uh, I, I always come and say, I'm not really teaching something new. Yeah? Right. I didn't invent the new, the wheel new. Right. It's I, not like the, the it's, method. That's why right. it's completely goes with what Charles is saying. Right. And uh, because it's, it's really so deep inside that classical understanding and movement is movement yeah body is body yeah, yeah? and joint muscles they're the same we have, we have to yeah. find the way to work with them and in the most and the classical dressage is the most healthy right amazing training concept and it's still up to date if modern sport uh, mm -hmm. scientists look into the old classical dressage they're absolutely amazed they say this is a health training for horse yeah. and rider for yeah. both yeah yeah and yeah. So what the old masters who did not have the technology to measure and the pressure pads and whatever, right. all we have in all our science, whatever, they had the experience and the feel mm -hmm. to write down things they didn't even know, but write right. them down that they're still up to date. Right, today. that that worked and yeah. that didn't. And I, you know, it's even like when you think about like, it's just great writing. I feel like Buck Brandeman is a natural, you know, and I hate to call it like natural horsemanship because it's just like, good horsemanship mm -hmm. and he always talks about like a soft feel mm -hmm. and like raising your energy softening your energy and that like yeah. i mean it's like exactly like, the same because horses are are so sensitive and you know um you know i used to ride a lot with walter zettel and he would mm -hmm. be like oh you could have cantered three horses with that aid and i was like <laughs> well i felt like he wasn't listening i had to you know and he's like wow like that was just way too much and he's like remember they can feel a fly and i'm like well i don't know if this one can feel a fly oh. right you know because this one's lazy or whatever yeah. and it was like you bring that to life for me like he did like oh whoa yeah. breathe it do yeah. less yeah. allow and yeah. don't create and mm -hmm. it's just like totally amazing that's fun <laughs> and it's so much fun that uh, i mean that especially with the COVID times that I've been at now so much uh, in my physiotherapy too. But uh, of course, breathing was the big thing. Yeah. And so I've been more and more developing and looking into what is happening when I ride and breathe. And I've yeah. tried a lot of things and, and I've developed more concepts of teaching riders how to breathe and not yeah. just say, keep breathing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Or we're just like, you're holding your breath. Yeah. Very Stop helpful. doing that. Yeah, very you're helpful. like, she's got like 27 different ways to, yeah. uh, and, uh, to do anything. And like how the laziest horses all went from walk to trot by the breath and not by the leg. Right. It was just, it's just stunning. It's amazing. You know? Yeah. And it's like, it's really true that they can <laughs> yeah. follow your intention and can feel a fly. And we're like, all screaming talking to way too much yeah and it's just it's just incredible so but it's fun to talk you know it is fun i it's so love like, talking with you <laughs> yeah oh my god we could like this could be like a regular thing we're all like Ooh. like this is we, we just turned the camera on because this is us at dinner time like yeah. everyone and my my mom and my husband are like oh these two. they're talking horses again like, oh my god <laughs> and then like what did you do in that lesson and ooh, what happened there like it's so amazing so tell us all where we can find you and all your online courses and what different classes that you offer oh. <laughs> well um what i have created were, were online courses uh, where i gave every month like a topic mm -hmm. and we had four sundays and uh, we made, and so i made a journey through the body taking yeah. a certain body part, pelvis or shoulders and hands or the spine or, yeah. or the legs uh, 
or the breathing. Yeah. And later I got more writing topics about the AIDS and mm -hmm. corners, how to write corners yeah. and stuff like that, you know. And every package of that is four lessons. Mm -hmm. The first one contains a big PowerPoint uh, and a bit more theory, mm -hmm. but a little bit of practical too. Mm -hmm. And then every other lesson has a practical part where you really move and try out things mm -hmm. and stretch certain parts of the body it's a lot on body awareness mm -hmm. but it's not just a pilates on the ground or something in gymnastic right. it's creating the awareness and creating the understanding where in riding is that necessary mm -hmm. so that you mm -hmm. can take it onto the horse because right. i was locked up i didn't have horses to right. teach on where right. i couldn't go so yeah. I, and I always said, I only always do all my exercises on the horses. I don't do off horse exercises right. uh, when I'm going traveling because everyone can do off horse exercises and I'm the one to work exercising on the horse. Right. But now I couldn't do it and I had to do off horse exercises and I got letters back from my horse says, thank you. Oh. My trainer told my transition was so much better. <laughs> Yeah, and it's, uh, I mean, that that's really, that's sweet. So I realized, yeah. yes, I actually can do all four <laughs> lessons that are connected into writing. And so if you contact Team Tate, yes. they can pass you on the information, yeah. how you can get a link. Uh, you can purchase a six-week link for each Very subject, cool. or you can purchase The other thing that I developed is that I noticed writers want to warm up. And they mm. warm up completely wrong, stretching too much, <laughs> doing the things that are contraproductive for their riding. And I was asked, can you give me a warm up lesson for my riding? And I kind of refused. I said, I warm up my horse every time different. There is no such thing as the perfect warm up, and it's always different. So the end of it was that uh, she persuaded me to give her weekly warm up lessons. <laughs> and we called it Good Morning Lynn. <laughs> and Lynn got 10 different lessons from me. With They're always around the whole body, but they have a focus, sometimes more in breathing, sometimes more on the pelvis, sometimes more in the shoulders, mm -hmm. some more on the mobility of the spine. And so this package of 10 different topics, you can alternate. You can yeah. wake up uh, before you go to the stable and think, hmm, today I think I need this. Yeah. You know, so you have variations or you can go through the whole package and through it again or something and there i i offer a link that's valid for three months and uh, you cool. can they can contact you about that too because we need to get more susanna in our lives <laughs> and in the academy so we're really excited to you know brainstorm about how we can do it because you're just yeah. amazing and hopefully i get more time beside between my travels now that i can finally get on with my new book Yes, exactly. Yes. Where well, so I will need your and Richard's help. Yes, I will. Big plans, to, big plans. Yes. <laughs> we've, got, we've got a lot of things cooking over here, a lot of things cooking. So thank yeah. you guys so much for joining us. Thank you, Susanna, for being such an incredible teacher and sharing your time just, with me and my I students. I love doing that. It's, so it's great. fun to be able to do what you love. It sure is. Every day is a gift. So yeah. thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Dressage Life with JJ Tate. Make sure to tell your friends that they can find us wherever they get their podcasts. And be sure to subscribe, like, and leave feedback to help other dressage lovers inspire their rides too. For more information and education from JJ Tate, make sure to visit teamtateacademy.com slash podcasts. Once there, take the next step towards joining JJ's new generation of classical riders by signing up for our mailing list. And we'll say thanks by sending you a special gift your own copy of JJ's ebook, Riding Your Horse Sound, a comprehensive guide to developing a healthy and happy dressage partner. The podcast you just listened to is produced and powered by Red Mare Enterprises, creating possibilities through branding, modern digital solutions, and project management. We know the horse industry inside and out. 